So you've said before that uh, you've never seen or we haven't seen levels of inequality like this since 1920s. How has it, how has it managed to get to this level? I think you have to look at how the, the politics of our global economy have worked. We have a process of globalization, uh, which means that people can manufacture and produce anywhere. We have a global technological revolution, which means that you can, that we have a much more open world for the world of uh, business. We've also seen the rise of uh, the political right wing. And if you look at the period from the 1970s, there was clearly a political agenda, which was long term, which was about the market, deregulation, liberalization, and that monetary issues would take precedence over others. So what we've seen is this cycle of political change, which has weakened all those institutions that were put in place after the Great Depression of the 1920s, and certainly after the war in the 1940s, that were geared to lifting all the boats. So there's an emphasis on fair incomes, an emphasis on collective bargaining, an emphasis on giving workers a voice, an emphasis that there would be a more equal distribution of the economic pie. What we've seen is the end of this social contract. What we have seen is a political assault on these institutions that were put in place to try and make sure that all the boats were raising at the same were being raised at the same time. And now we've come to the end of what I think is a bankrupt political model because it's not working for all of us. It provoked the world's financial crisis. It has, provoked, it, it has provoked economic instability. So it's time that in this new global context where we can draw the data and the conclusions together, our societies are more unequal. Workers are not getting a fair share. Uh, demand relies up to, to 60 to 70 percent on consumption. So the solutions that we require um, are known, they are available, but it means that the political lobbying of the, uh, the liberalizers, the privatizers, uh, will, uh, will, will, will have to confront a new, a new reality that their model does not work. And is Davos the correct place to be challenging these, these, these people? And, and, and is it, do you get solutions or is it just talk? Well, first of all, Davos itself is a place, it's a gathering point. The World Economic Forum itself is not declarational. They produce a lot of studies, a lot of analysis, but they bring all the main actors together. What we have managed to do on the labor side and the NGO community is to ratchet up the pressure on inequality. Uh, last year, the Pope uh, was, uh, he'd only been in the job a couple of months. He sent a message on inequality. Barack Obama has said for the remainder of his presidency, inequality is concerned number one. The governors of uh, central banks from uh, the UK to Germany and the Federal Reserve in the United States have said inequality is the number one problem that we are confronted. We've kind of managed the financial crisis, but this is something that they didn't see coming. They didn't see this, this as a result of these, all these financial reforms. And so now in front of us is this, this decision about what to do about it. So therefore, we will engage with all the people that I've mentioned. We will engage with all the global institutions and the business people. Workers need a pay rise. We need to improve the ability of uh, working people to enjoy a certain quality of life. We'll be arguing for minimum wage, a living wage, collective bargaining, all the stuff they don't want to hear. They have to confront the reality that the model that they've presented to the world has worked for the few. This has led to skepticism in, in trusting business leaders, trusting political leaders, and we're the bringer of this, uh, of this news. I'm glad to say that, uh, that Oxfam today have released their report. They are, they are uh, led by an African uh, uh, leader who is, who is also co-chairing. For the first time, Oxfam is co-chairing the World Economic Forum. So we're on the inside track there, if you like. And we don't, uh, we, I go there with a forceful message. I'll speak like this uh, in Davos as I'm speaking to you, Matthew. Well, good luck in Davos, and, uh, and we'll check in with you when you get back. Okay, I'll be here. Thanks, Matthew, and all the best to you Thank and to South Africa. Thank you. Thank you.